welcome to Vex 2019. We welcome you. We're pitching for money actually, so the pressure is, is high. And all this happens in one place, on one platform. The community created by Abby and Borga. And we're going to use part of that data to expand into other markets, South Africa, Kenya, and other markets. <laughs> Our superstars who are graduating today. I hope that you will find your passion and work with something you truly love. Class of 2019. We made it! Hello everyone. I warmly welcome you all to the MESH training program info session. My name is Salah Simensa and I'm the human resource associate at MESH. We are thrilled and pleased to have you all here. Here you're going to learn all about the MESH training program, what we look out for in candidates and the application process. So basically we'll be walking you through the application process and you also get to hear from past EIT's alumni and how MESC has contributed to their journey. Welcome once again. So if you have any questions in the course of the session, kindly make sure to type them in the Q&A box and my colleague Nana Kofi will respond to them. So MEST was founded in Ghana in February 2008 by Yon Lysogen as part of a social corporate responsibility. He had a dream to start a school in sub-Saharan Africa, to be specific, to create opportunities for young African talent and to equip them to make more impact. So Yon felt that there was a lot of talent here in Africa that needed to be tapped. And after research and a couple of field trips to Kenya, Tanzania, Ghana, as well as Uganda, to speak with several industry players and several institutions and individuals, Ghana was the place that was chosen for the establishment of the school. This was because it was comparatively stable and comfortable and had a great tradition for education. Apart from being an English speaking country, Ghana also had or has direct flights to the West and to Europe as well. MES was founded on the belief that talent is everywhere, but opportunity is not. And that's where MES comes in with the opportunities. We offer technology entrepreneur training and a network of hubs providing incubation for technology startups in Africa. So let's find out what the MESH training program is all about. So the MESH training program is a full-time, fully sponsored program in which the class completes a graduate level course in software development, business, go-to-market strategies, business models, and as well as marketing and communications. So the class basically, um, once, once we recruit and select the tech entrepreneurs from Africa, they are trained and are tasked to form teams with business ideas that address local and international problems. So the program, culminates or at the end of the program, teams are supposed to engage in a final investment pitch and the best teams will have the opportunity to receive some seed funding of 100,000 USG to start their companies. Now the seed funding is not given all at once. 
So the companies receive them in tranches and they basically use these, um, the seed funding to expand and scale. Incubation is also provided to the selected companies and they receive support and join our global community of like-minded entrepreneurs. So I mentioned that the graduates, uh, the training program is fully spon sponsored. So which means that full tuition is covered, accommodation is provided, healthcare is provided, as well as meals every week. So we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner provided. You also get to meet people from diverse backgrounds to enrich your worldview. You get to learn from experts. You also get the potential to receive investments and business support and an access to a huge network of alumni and professionals. So it is an undeniable fact that COVID has changed the way a lot of organizations operate. So we've had to monitor the situation with COVID and that's why this year applications have been limited to only people living in Ghana and Nigeria. The program this year will also not be up to one year. It's going to be about six, nine months. Hopefully when the pandemic is over, we'll get back to opening the applications to more countries and having it for one year. The class of 2022 has been confirmed to start next year, January. So these are the kind of entrepreneurs we look out for. We are looking out for people who are crazy about tech and entrepreneurship and how to use technology to use and achieve business results. We are looking for disciplined, motivated and self-starter individuals who can work and deliver on assignments and projects. We are also looking for Africans living in Ghana or Nigeria between the ages of 18 to 35 years. So you also have to have a degree from a university or technical college or equivalent and, and some experience, some work experience would be very preferred. You also have to have deep communication, leadership skills, and you should be ready to commit to a one year fully residential program. Now let's get right into the application process. So at this point, I'm going to carefully walk you through the application process and my colleague Nana Kofi will be sharing the links in the chat box at the various steps as we move along. So first step is to complete the pre-learning courses. So we have some nice selected courses from IBM and then from the Open University and Partners as well as Google Digital Skills Africa. So um, these courses basically are introductory courses to agile, design thinking, web development, HTML, communications, digital marketing and business modeling. So you are required to complete and finish all these courses and submit the link profile of your badges and upload your certificates to the link provided in the chat box by the application deadline. So you basically have to make sure that you read through the application instructions. The first step is to complete the pre-learning courses and submit those certificates to your, to the, to the Google form, the link to the Google form. Now the next step is to take an aptitude test. Kindly take the aptitude test. This is an assessment just to test your logical reasoning, your general knowledge and your English language skills. This you will need to do before you fill in the application form. So make sure that you take the test before you fill the application form because the score from your test is a required section that you need to fill in in the application form. Now, the third step is to fill and complete the application form. So the link has been provided in the chat box as well. Um, you will need to first create an account on Submittable. And basically after that, you get the chance to complete the form. So the form basically asks you questions about personal data and, and you have to basically write some small essays, short essays, just so that we can know more about you and whether MIST is the right next step for you. 
So after you've finished with your application form, you need to submit it by the application deadline. And then we would review your forms. If you qualify for the next stage, you'll be contacted to have a phone interview with us and our team. So you will have a 15 to 20 minute conversation with you just to get to know you more and to figure out if MESS is the right next step for you and just to know what drives you to want to become a tech entrepreneur. Now, after the phone interview stage, the next stage, we have the next stage interview where we also invite you for another session with some of our management and you get to be asked questions about the tech space here in Africa and basically your business ideas and what you'd like to, what problems in Africa you'd like to solve. So after this stage, you'll be contacted um, to let you know if you've qualified for becoming an EIT or joining the class of 2022. And once that is done, you'll be given an offer letter and we'll be looking forward to you joining us next year in 2022. So it's that simple. All you need to do is to read the application instructions carefully on the application website, follow the instructions each step of the way, and then click submit to turn in your application. We encourage you to start your application now. The deadline for this is 17 September, 2021. So I'm very sure that at this point, you understand that it's, it's a very simple process. So we encourage you to do so to join this class. Before we move on, we have an exciting poll for you, which will appear on your screen. Kindly respond to it. If you are listening, it should not be too hard. So the question is, which year was Missed Africa founded? I'd like to see your responses. Oh, wow. Nice. Which year was Miss Africa founded? 2019, 2013, or 2008? Great, looks like we have um, just a few people who said MESS was founded in 2019, some said 2013. And a good number of you were right. MESS was founded in February 2008. So this is great. So to date, we have trained many young African entrepreneurs, supported the founding of over 70 startups across the continent, and received global recognition for the impact we've had in Africa. So some of our alumni are featured here. Some alumni have gone on to found successful companies, namely Asoriba, Ampersand, Mikasa, Adidas, Adi and Boga, Coddington and Invoicia. Yeah. Others have been gainfully employed by reputable companies like Microsoft, Google, IBM, just to name a few. It goes without saying that MESS is definitely doing something right and it is worthwhile an investment and experience to join the MESS training program. So the icing on the cake, we have two alumni from the MESS training program who have joined us today. We have Savia Jacke and Evelyn Kabereire. I'll go on to introduce our first alumni speaker. 
Xavier is a smart creative, a technology enthusiast, and a passionate software entrepreneur. He co-founded Asoreba and has led its product development across multiple product lines and rose to become the CEO, stabilizing his operations and growing to profitability. He is a Harambian and Alibaba eFounders Fellow and a proud Miss Seed Stars, Tech Stars and Growth Africa alumnus. Xavier, we can't wait to hear your story. We are honored to have you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Selassie. Um, <clears throat> Good afternoon to all of you once again. Um, really a pleasure to be interacting with you this afternoon. Um, my name is Savia and um, I'm the CEO and a co-founder of Asoriba, one of um, Ghana's most vibrant startups. Yeah, I'm a trained software engineer and I'm really passionate about um, leadership and building solutions that really solve, you know, problems in a safe, scalable and sustainable manner. Um, and like you've already heard, I'm also, um, MS EIT or MS alumni, so to say. Yeah, so um, how did my journey at MS um, all start and how did I end up where I am today? So um, first of all, I want to say that you are just um, at a point where your life is about to change, no matter how you want to look at it. Um, and the fact that you are sitting in this info session right now means that um, there is a very huge opportunity right ahead of you. And um, I keep saying that um, the future is really global and very digital. The future is global and the future is digital. So any opportunity that affords to bring these two pieces together for you is something that I recommend you don't, you don't joke with. So um, why is the future global and why is the future digital? Um, the future is digital because we all know the power of the internet and the fact that digital solutions actually um, the, the industry we currently live in and everything, um, I mean, around us is all about software, it's all about apps and products that are solving solutions and um, that are solving problems in a very scalable manner that, I mean, sometimes beats the imagination of people. And the future is also global because whatever solution you build from the comfort of your room can be used by anybody anywhere um, in any part of the world. And so, um, however you are looking at it or the way you want to think about it, um, I just want to tell you that this is a very huge opportunity and you shouldn't take that for granted. So how did I end up at MEST? And first of all, why did I even choose MEST um, to be precise? I never for once thought <clears throat> I could end up at MEST. Um, it was never part of my plans. Um, I think um, back in 2013, when I was still an undergrad at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology um, in my very final year, um, the very final days of, of my stay on campus. And then um, we had this group of people coming to talk about MES and um, all the exciting things there was to talk about. Um, I saw it as an opportunity to go do national service. So yeah, I was really excited about that. So I, I approached them, spoke to them about um, the chances of me doing national service with the organization. But it took their time to tell me all there was to hear about MES and the fact that it was something even bigger than a national service opportunity if I had a chance. Um, but one thing I noted about these people was that they were very confident, um, they were very intelligent, very, very smart people. And the best of all, they were just young people like myself. So I asked myself why I couldn't be like them or why I couldn't be um, um, part of the MES community. So I was inspired to apply and um, even though I was doing it passively just to see what comes out of it, um, it ended out well. Um, out of over 2,000 people that wrote the aptitude test, a few of us were shortlisted for a series of interviews. And yeah, that was when it really dawned on me that I was up to something that was really, really great. Um, the caliber of people I met uh, at the various stages of the interview, from the group interviews, the phone interviews, to even the one-on-one -on -one interviews, um, really pointed to the fact that MES was a community that really valued talent. and. Um, it was a community that really assured your personal growth and would give you something that we naturally not get from um, our regular educational system. And this way it actually becomes interesting. Um, most of us go to school and um, there's this thing I call just in case learning and then just in time learning. They are two different things. Okay, so people go to school because they have to go to school and they do courses because yeah, that is what was offered them or that is what is available and they just have to go to school, just have to take up a course. So yeah, they do it and at the end of the day, they come back home and they are not really able to make meanings out of their lives. 
Okay, that is the just in case education. And then we have what I call the just in time education, which is really doing something that is relevant to the job industry or doing something that is relevant to, I mean, providing value um, at the end of the day. And this is what I didn't find in the university, even though I did computer science, I learned how to code and all that, but I still felt I was not really ready for the job market um, because I didn't know what it was all about. I didn't know where to even start from. I knew I wanted to do national service from somewhere and maybe get a job and that was it. But when I got into the mess community, I began to see the relevance of the things I studied in school. And um, I'm also to see that MES actually compressed my four years education into two. We had the chance to do the MES program for two years. So yeah, they compressed everything into two. I had to learn things around software development. I even went deeper, even though I had computer science background. Um, I went deeper in um, learning how to code the right way, you know, using all the modern frameworks and technologies available. And best of all, how to build a business out of my, um, my technical skills. I also learned how to communicate so I could pitch anywhere. And as a matter of fact, uh, I actually pitched um, to win the Best Startup Award for Africa in 2015, just a year after I graduated from, um, from MEST. Uh, it was a huge platform, but yeah, we were able to pull that off. So that tells you the quality of people that actually come out of MEST and um, the change MEST um, can, can make happen in your life. So yeah, that was how the journey started. But um, back into the MEST program, um, we're always challenged to think about solutions. Whenever we see an opportunity, we're able to spot it. And this is something you will not find with a regular person. It comes with years of training and conscious human capital development. So yeah, they taught us how to always see opportunities, to always see um, you know, um, solutions in problems and all those. And every now and then we're doing projects that we call capstone projects. And um, the whole idea at the end of the day was we've been able to build software solutions or software businesses um, out of the numerous opportunities that surround us. So yeah, um, along the line, we spotted an opportunity which actually translated to the business I'm running today. Um, this opportunity, um, even though like, uh, I need to say this, my, I was born in the church, my parents are leaders in the church. I was, I mean, I was just raised in the church, everything about me was church, but I never for once thought that there could be a solution like the one we have built currently that could save the church space until I got into mess. So, I was able to identify that there was a problem in the church that we needed to solve. And then so uh, we decided to form a team with um, some other people that were excited about it. So four of us came together. Uh, we started thinking through the range of solutions we can provide for this organized group of people. And trust me, churches are really huge. We have uh, more than 500 million churches in Africa and half the continent's population actually Christian. So that is a very huge opportunity for us to really unlock. So, um, we built solutions and we started, um, I mean, um, going to the market, validating our ideas, um, and I mean, started selling and um, all those. So yeah, um, eventually we pitched for the 50,000 um, seed funding. And this is one of the interesting things that MES does to you, which I'm not sure you can find anywhere else. Um, the only value you have as a person at this point is probably the education you had, but um, uh, nobody, in any investment firm who want to place a bet on you at this point because you are very inexperienced, you don't have uh, any track record, you don't have any value to provide. But MES actually took the bet on us. Um, they gave us 50,000 to start our business with, even though they know the rate of failure could be very high. And um, of course, after the money was the full support that they gave, uh, they gave us to make our businesses succeed. So talking about accounting support, legal, you know, and all these pieces come together to form a very successful company. As a young person, you are not uh, um, entitled to, or you are not expected to know some of these things. M maybe you, you should know them after years of, uh, you know, experience running a business or stuff like that. But yeah, we got this support out of the box, straight from MES, and uh, we're able to run our business, grow it into uh, four countries currently. And um, we have revenue that is really sustaining the business. And just recently, we started declaring profits. So yeah, I'm not sure I could have done this thing um, without the training that I got from MEST. And even the people who didn't get um, the opportunity to start companies, I can tell you most of them have ended up in really um, huge organizations across the globe. We have friends that are working in Facebook, friends that are working in Amazon. Um, I have friends in um, Google, you know, um, Microsoft, and all these people are actually MEST graduates. 
And the thing about MES graduates is when you see them, you know, they exude that confidence. They, um, um, they are that smart. They are very intelligent. And your interaction with them alone tells you that these are actually different breeds of people. So yeah, um, it's an opportunity I recommend for everybody on this call. Um, don't take it lightly. MES has the potential of turning your life around. Just see the next one year as an investment into your career. Go through the MES program, learn all there is to learn. Have the passion to um, develop software and start software businesses. And who knows, you can be the next um, you know, unicorn that we've been expecting in Africa for a long time. Um, I'll close by sending, um, by sharing a few lessons that I've learned along the line um, as an EIT has missed. Um, for me as a person, what I've seen is that MES has made me more confident and I'm able to compete on any global scale. Um, in the introduction, they, um, they mentioned that I'm an Alibaba e founder fellow, I'm a Harambian. And these are like really, really prestigious organizations that um, you, you ordinarily cannot just join. But I believe that the mess factor um, has really paved the way for me and I'm able to compete with anybody across the globe um, for such prestigious opportunities. Um, secondly, um, I think mess has changed my thinking. Uh, I don't think as a loser, when I am thinking, I see possibilities, I think opportunities, I think solutions and, um, like I said, when you spot an opportunity as a MES graduate, you should know, and you begin to build a business around it. There are people who have gone on to start two, three, four businesses um, right after MES, and they are all doing very well. So yeah, MES has changed my thinking in that regard. Um, and I'm also able to quantify the value that I can deliver in any organization as well. <clears throat> and finally, uh, MES has actually equipped me with um, skills that um, are really relevant in every, um, every part of the world. As a software engineer, um, and also as someone who has run a software business for a while, um, I'm sure if I find myself in any other part of the continent or any other part of the globe, whether in the US or in China, um, anywhere else, I'm sure that I can put my skills to good use and definitely um, any organization can find value in it. So yeah, I'll just end by saying that, um, take this opportunity, um, Whatever it is you have to do to make sure you enroll at MES, just go ahead and do it. And um, we're very excited to have you as part of the EITs and we look forward to welcoming you. Thank you. Over to you, Selassie. Thank you very much, Savia. You've all heard, ladies and gentlemen, MES has made Savia more confident. He has, it has changed his thinking. Now he thinks possibilities, he thinks solutions, he thinks business. So make sure that you take this opportunity and apply. Our next alumni speaker is Evelyn, Evelyn Cabarere. So Evelyn is currently an ICT officer in a government parastatal in Kenya and a MEST alumni ambassador. She's a passionate person about product management and UX design, as she has also worked in those roles before. Evelyn, we can't wait to hear your story. Over to you. Um, hi guys, um, thank you, Salasi. So my name is Evelyn. Um, I was in the class of 2017. Um, yeah, I graduated in 2017. Um, and I went through the program, the one year program. So I'm originally from Kenya and that's where I am till now. Um, so before joining MEST, I was someone who rarely took, um, I will say risks of some sort, or even thought about um, venturing into new opportunities. So like we say, I was always in my comfort zone. But um, joining MEST, you meet people from all over, um, from fellows to your fellow colleagues. You get to learn from each other. You actually even learn um, different things and different skills than, than, than what you ideally knew. So personally for me, I never knew anything to do with um, product management, UI, UX. So um, joining MEST, learning about it, I was extremely excited about it. Um, that is where my passion for um, product management, um, UI UX started. Um, and then also when it came to business, um, when it came to software development, that interest con continued um, growing and actually MEST makes you be an all-rounded person. 
um, despite whatever path you may decide to take later on. Be it a techpreneur, if you want to go back to employment, still mess to like um, help you become all-rounded. Um, as Sevia previously said, um, I'll, I, I concur with him. So personally, MEST has made me be more, um, more of a critical thinker. So anytime you see something happening business-wise, you'll always you know, think of opportunities, different solutions, how probably um, this particular problem can be solved in maybe a million different ways, but it has to suit whatever market um, that you want to venture into. Um, so personally, after joining MEST, after graduating, I had a startup in the tourism sector um but my team and i didn't get the funding um but that did not stop us from bootstrapping so came back home to kenya bootstrapped again and then we joined another accelerator program uh, and still still even after graduating we still had the support for mest so um we had the space the tech space that um the mest hub in nairobi uh, we also had like contact with um, the management and even our fellow colleagues and the fellows who supported us throughout that other accelerator program. But after some time, my co-founders and I decided to part ways because of um, several reasons. Um, but um, I will say transitioning into employment, uh, back to employment, there's actually been a very um, interesting um, thing um, because if you compare who I was before joining MESH to who I am right now, there are two different people. Um, right now I'm able to think more clearly, think more critically, um, learn new skills, take more risks, find more opportunities, um, just even give that, uh, give myself that self-initiative to continue studying more and exploring more opportunities. So yeah, I will encourage all of you to apply. It's a very interesting program and you'll actually get to meet very many smart people um, and interact with them as well. And who knows, you might even make um, lifetime friends who will always help you in your career growth. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, over to you, Selassie. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Evelyn. And I'm very sure that some of you have a lot of questions for them. So make sure that you can raise your hand actually so that we give you the opportunity to ask questions. But before that, let me engage you in another interesting poll. So I'll just start the next poll. It's a question about the pre-learning courses. So have you completed the pre-learning courses? Let's see your responses. Interesting responses. We've got a few more people voting. Wow. 68 haven't started yet. Just a few minutes more, and then I'll end the poll. Okay, so I think a great number of us <laughs> haven't finished the pre-learning courses. It takes time, so make sure that you finish it and start and complete your application form before the deadline. 
So at this point, I would like to ask, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, kindly raise your hand and then you'll be given the opportunity to speak. Okay, we have a few people who have raised their hands. Um, so Christopher, Christopher, please go ahead and speak. Hello. Hi, Christopher. Hi, Tomo. How are you? So, Fine. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, currently I don't have a question. I'm in Kenya. I will wait for the next call 2022. Okay. Yeah, same application. Okay. okay, so please, if you have any questions, you'll be given the opportunity to speak. Emmanuel Anene. Emmanuel, please go ahead to ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. I don't even know I raised my hand. That's <laughs> maybe when I was trying to ask questions and chat box. Okay. Let me just ask a uh, simple question. Mm -hmm. You talked about uh, the program because the, one of the alumni was saying that they had the program for two years. They will, you will see that it's going to be nine months from now until the pandemic is over. So, so my question is like, will the program give us the opportunity to learn as well the same thing with the people that had it for two years and we are engaged in for all that are going to be having it for nine months this time around? Okay, so um, the reason why it's nine months next year is because of the pandemic. So we'll definitely structure the curriculum and the whole program around that time duration so that you can have a great time to be ready and prepared for um, your pitches and to start your own businesses as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Anyone else have a question? So I see Stephen Oladosu. Stephen. Please go ahead. Okay. Hello? Yes, Stephen. Hello, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I actually, I mistakenly pressed the, on the hand. I didn't really want, want to ask a question. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Thank you. All right. Alfred Sosu, um, please, if you don't have any questions, you can just lower your hand. But if you have a question, have your hands raised. Richard. Richard, you've been permitted to speak. Um, yes, 
كلام الرابع Okay. Um, my network is bad, but if you have any questions, you can type them in the Q and A box, and then we'll address them. But moving on, I I would like to address some of the questions that came to us at, ahead of the session. So one person asked, "I applied when applications opened earlier. Do I have to apply again?" The answer is no. Once you have applied, you do not have to reapply. Another person has asked, when I click on the link to apply, it takes me to the same page. How do I submit my application? The answer is, when you click on the link to apply, scroll down to the bottom of the page to find a button to sign up for submittable. You will need to create a submittable account and then gain access to the application form. Okay, another person has asked a question. Can I combine the training program with my full-time job? The answer is you will not be able to combine your job with a training program. You should be ready to commit to a full residential program for the year or for the nine months. So another question that came to us was, I would like to know if a level 300 students can apply to the program? If not, why? So the answer is no, a level 300 student will not be eligible to apply as one of the requirements of candidates is the possession of a university degree. So um, Alexambi asked, what about people who applied last year and got selected? Yes, for those people, they went through the phone interview stage and we'll definitely communicate them in due course if they qualify for the next stage interviews. Um, another person, Taiwo, says that, asks that, please, is it to get people, get Google ma digital marketing sets for selection consideration? I don't know. Maybe you can clarify your question, but if you're asking about the pre-learning courses, yes, it's mandatory for you to complete these courses before the application deadline. So another person asked, has asked, hello, please, is there an app for the MEST pre-learning courses on the Apple Store or Play Store? No, you need to have a laptop to complete the courses, it's, it's more convenient that way. So another person, Techiwa asked, please, what if I don't have a degree certification? Um, Techiwa, the answer to that question is, you should have an, equ an equivalent, if any. Do you have a diploma certification? That, that should be fine to submit for the MESH training program. So if you have any questions, I want to allow, open the floor for you to ask questions to our alumni as well, if you want to learn more about their experiences. So I have, um, let me open, give a lady. I have Sandra Onai who has raised her hand. So Sandra, I'm allowing you to talk. The floor is yours, Sandra. Go ahead to ask your question. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, I'm Sandra from Ghana. My question was, um, I wanted to ask about the, those who applied earlier this year and were given, I was part of those who were given the phone interview. I would like to know if my application is still under review. Yes, um, Sandra, your application is still under review. So we'll definitely contact you for the next stage interview in due course. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Great. Um, I have Yao Ampene, Aman Pene. 
Yeah, please, you've been allowed to talk. Yeah, hi. Like, um, mm -hmm. Good um, yeah. I'm just curious. I'm, curious. Um, I'm currently actually doing my master's. Um, it's, and it's obviously because of COVID, I'm doing it overseas back in Ghana. I'm in Ghana right now. And I'm wondering, is it possible for me to combine this, this course with my master's degree? Um, obviously, because it's over, it was over two years, the workload is quite light. And I've just, I'm curious to see um, what you think in terms of the workload at uh, MEST and the masters. Okay, so I'll be honest with you, Yao. It's quite an intensive program. It's a full-time program. So you, you need to be fully committed to it. Um, I don't know how your master's program is. Is it on the weekends or it's... The, most, the master's program is quite, it's, um, well, it's, it's an idea so it's supposed to be best for international development. So it's quite intense as well. But I'm almost finished with the coursework actually. I'm just doing a dissertation now, which is due in January. Um, but my, my contention is, um, I'm just interested to, to, to know, um, if I don't apply this year, I can still apply next year, right? Of course, you can still apply next year. Once application is open for next year, yeah. That's fine, because um, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of people saying they've been delayed from the previous year. So I'm wondering why that is. Yes, it's due to the COVID. Um, COVID-19. So we are still monitoring the situation around the pandem pandemic. And that's why we've shifted our class to start next year. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I would allow Kweku Ofori to speak. Take last year your question. Okay, it looks like he's not ready to speak. Um, wisdom, Noani, I'm allowing you to speak. Please, this is the place where you can get all your questions answered. So do not feel shy to speak up and ask your question. So Wisdom, you have the floor. All right, thank you very much. My name is um, Wisdom Wani, I'm from Nigeria. I want to ask please, uh, um, is the MEST program, is it uh, going to be online or uh, both online and offline? And if it's going to be offline, uh, is there any provision for the accommodation and other logistics um, concerning the training programs for the nine months. Okay, so we are still monitoring the issue with the pandemic, but we are looking forward to having a hybrid um, model. So it's going to be both offline and online, but of course you'll be expected to be here in Ghana. It's going to be fully sponsored, which means accommodation is covered and meals are covered as well so you should look forward to that yeah all right thank you very much you're welcome any other questions okay Ido Afiz um you said you raised your hand Ido. Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Who is speaking? Hello. Yeah, it is Ofori. Yes, please go ahead with your question. Kweku, please go ahead with your question. Those who will not be able to complete, or is it mandated to finish the pre lessons before you can be able to apply for, for the application? 
Okay, so yes, you have to finish the pre-learning courses um, to complete your application, but perhaps the smart way to go about it is to first do the, the aptitude test and then you complete the application form before you do the pre, you finish up with your pre-learning courses. But rem you are reminded that you need to finish okay. all of these by the application deadline. Do you uh, understand? Well, and I, want, I wanted to also ask, yeah, I do understand. I wanted to also ask, can I do the pre-lesson and the aptitude test and apply and use this to apply next year? Or do I have to do it again when I'm applying for next year too? Yes, for the aptitude test, the test changes. So you definitely have to apply, basically do the test again if you want to apply next year. You can't carry forward a score you had this so, year, a different year. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what, what about the pre -list? Kweku, you've, um, you've muted yourself. Kindly unmute. I said, well, what about the pre-lesson courses? Can I do this this year, then use it to apply for next year? Yes, for the pre-learning courses, it's at the mm -hmm. end of it all, you get certificates, you get badges, which are basically for your profile. So you could use that to apply for next year, if next year requires you to finish the pre-learning courses. Yeah. So I'll take questions from no. other people. Okay. okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll take questions from other people. Philemon Arthur asks, how can I get access to the aptitude test and pre-learning courses? So Philemon, it's on the application um, page. So make sure that you follow our social media pages, you get the link there, and then you apply. So Ebenezer Aqua has asked, please, I applied for digital marketing course, but I haven't heard anything yet. Ebenezer, you don't apply for the digital marketing course. It's part of the pre-learning courses. All you need to do is to sign up for, click on the link, sign up for the course, and then basically start it. So Yaira asked, I have no background in tech, but I'm more than ready to learn. Can I apply? Yaira, yes, you can. You just have to make sure that you fulfill all the requirements and basically make that move. Okay, so we have quite a few. I'll allow some people to speak. I think a couple of people still have their hands raised. Awe Jacob, please. Please ask your question. Okay, um, my question is after applying, after submitting your application, um, will you be contacted soon uh, for the phone interview? Or how long will you wait to have the phone interview? That's my question. Yes. So after you've finished with your application and submitted, we will review your form and your score and to make sure that you've basically ticked all the boxes. And then we invite you for a 15 to 20 minutes phone interview just to know more about you and to see whether MIST is the right next step for you. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the duration because I, apply, I submitted my application, uh, I think last month on the 7th. You submitted the last month? Yes, please, on the 7th. Yes, so applications are still open. So once it's closed, review process starts and then we'll get back to you on whether you've qualified for the next stage. Okay, okay, because yeah. the reason why I'm asking this is some people said they, they received the phone interview. They had the phone interview. That is why I'm asking this. 
Um, yes, so those are people who applied earlier this year. Some okay. also applied last year. Okay. okay. So we've had to do as we've opened applications three times. So um, you just be patient. We would definitely get to your application and give you some feedback. Okay, sure. I think that, that answers my question. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any In a piece, you can speak. Um, okay, thank you. Um, my question is to do with the phone call. Um, apparently, we're supposed to receive a Google Meet link via email, and I'm not sure if I have. And I just want to ask if it's possible to reapply for that um, link if I haven't received it. Sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you come again? Um, my question is to do with the phone call. Mm -hmm. And um, I received information that um, we're supposed to receive a Google Meet link to book the phone call. Um, I'm not sure if I've received that email yet, so I just wanted to confirm if there's a way to reapply for or maybe the link to apply for the phone call. Okay, so Enoch, you, I, I would have to check that, but you can send us an email with your request. If you think you were reached out to, you can send us an email, just a reminder to recruitment at meltwater.org so that we see where you are at and confirm if you, if you- I did, receive a, I did receive the email for the, to go on to the interview, but I haven't received like a link to apply for a phone call. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We'll check that, but send us an email with your request. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Joanna, Joanna, you've been given the opportunity to speak and ask your question. Joanna. Okay, okay, that's fine. Joanna says she's in a noisy place. So Joanna, you can you can send us your question if you are able to speak. Edward. Edward, please go ahead and ask your question. Okay, thank you very much. Please, um, I wanted to know if um, I can apply to do my national service with um, MES um, when, I, when I graduate. And I want to know the application process. How am I supposed to you know, go, about, go about it if I can? So, um, Edward. What am I supposed to do? So, Edward, you can go ahead. Um, to apply for MEST, but you should have some, some work experience as well. So I'm sure you did a little bit of internships at school. So that should, that should qualify you. But um, the other question you asked, can you come again? Edward. Hi, Edward. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So the other question is, um, how many interviews are you supposed to go through when you maybe qualify for, when you are shortlisted for um, interviews? How many I mean, series of interviews are you supposed to go through for the final selection? So you go through two interview stages. So the first stage is the phone interview. And then the next one is the... The next one is the next interview stage. So you speak to a couple of people from our team to do this. Which is going to be face to face, right? No, it, it's not going to be face to face. It's going to be virtual.
Okay, so we have a lot of questions coming in still, but I would have to stop here and basically run through and round up with our keynotes. Let me stop to share my screen. So here are some helpful tips for you. Um, make sure to complete all the pre-learning courses and submit certificates and links to the form. Take the aptitude test, read the questions carefully, quickly, and aim to get a high score. Complete the application form and read over your short essays very carefully. Do not wait until the last minute to submit your application. So you can prepare to join the next cohorts by further developing an interest in the tech startup scene in Africa. And also take some time out to learn more about the business aspect of them and try to sharpen or learn software development skills, marketing and communication skills. So we look forward to receiving all your applications. And remember, the opportunity at MIST not all the teams will receive an investment at the end of the program. So if you do not get funding in the long run, it's not the end of the world. At the end of the program, you will still have acquired relevant skills that will make you employable anywhere in the world. So if you have any more questions, kindly send an email to recruitment at millswater.org and we will respond promptly Make sure to stay safe, keep safe, and strive. Make sure to stay safe, keep safe, and strive to make impact positively. We wish you all the best in your applications. Enjoy the journey and the rest of your day. Thank you all for joining us today. We've come to the end of the info session.